What's going on YouTube? So uh, I'm going to do a deck profile for my Eilon Wind Witch artifact. I guess you would call them invoked now uh, for the TCG. But yeah, somebody asked me to do a deck profile. I was able to get this deck together pretty early because uh, my box came, or my three boxes came in and I pulled everything I needed for it. So that was pretty awesome. So yeah, we'll just hop right into it. So I'm running three uh, Alistars, or Alaster, however you say his name. Um, so for him, you can discard him from your hand, and you can increase a fusion monster's attack and defense by a thousand until the end of turn. Also, if he's normal summon or flip face up, you can add an invocation from your deck to your hand. So running three of him, running three of the Wind Witch Ice Spell. Uh, for her, if you control no monsters, you can special summon her from your hand, and uh, then you can special summon a Wind Witch from your deck to the uh, to the field. Yeah, but for the rest of the turn, you can't special summon from the extra deck unless it's a level 5 or higher wind monster. Also, um, you could deal 500 damage to your opponent once you uh, special summon. So, three of her. Two of the glass bell. And, uh, so, whoops, sorry. There for her, if she's normal special summon, you can add a wind witch monster from your deck to your hand, except for a uh, wind witch glass bell. Um, also, you can't, uh, you can't special summon monsters except for wind for the rest of the turn. Um, and then one of the Snowbell, and she's the one you'll search out. So, when she's summoned, you'll search out the Glass Bell, you'll special summon it, and then when she's summoned, you'll search this to your hand, and then for her ability, I assume it's a her, I don't know, it's a gender neutral ball, I guess, but uh, for this ability, um, if you control two or more wind monsters, and no non-wind monsters, then you can special summon this from your hand. Um, so what you want to do is, I'll get to it a little bit later, but there's a, a certain synchro creature you're going to want to make and then you can turn that into a, a crystal wing, synchro dragon, or whatnot. So. Alright, so I'm running uh, artifacts in this build, so we're running one moral attack. Um, we also run the artifact symptoms of course, but moral attack pretty much, one is special summon. I'm sure everybody knows how the uh, artifacts work, but yeah, you could pop one of their face up with him. Uh, Artifact Scythe, I'm running, I'm trying out three, uh, I may go down to two and then run an extra uh, board wipe like a Dark Hole, um, but I mean this is really good for Zodiacs, it uh, just like shuts them down really hard and makes them not be able to play too well. Uh, I'm running one single Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, I, I do kind of want to run two of her, of her, but I don't know, the deck's pretty tight and yeah, I, I, I don't know, I may try her out in uh, a higher quantity in, in the future. Uh, maxi two, you want to max out on maxi. It's obviously really good this format. No reason not to run. Uh, we're running one Regeki. Uh, that's the only, pretty much the only removal that we're running uh, in the main deck. We do have a Book of Moon, which is kind of a control, but not really removal per se. So we're running three terraformings. Uh, I'll actually get to the reason that we're running terraformings. My battery's dying every single time that happens. Alright, so uh, yeah, terraformings to search out this field spell, and uh, this says when it's activated, you can add one uh, Alistar the Invoker, which is a creature in the, the very first one, a monster uh, that we showed you, or that I showed you, and uh, yeah, pretty much this stops your opponent from stopping your fusion plays. They can't react to them, they can't uh, negate them, um, yeah, so I mean, it's pretty dope. Uh, it, Pretty much solidifies your fusion plays for the deck or whatever. So yeah, uh, running two invocation. Uh, this lets you fusion summon from your uh, extra deck from your hand. But if you're fusion summoning uh, invoke, excuse me, invoker creature or invoked creature, um, you can actually banish from your graveyard or either player's graveyard uh, the creatures for the invoked um, summon. So. Um, also, you, when this is in your graveyard and the Alistar is in your graveyard, you can shuffle this back and add the Alistar back to your hand. So, yeah, you could pretty much just recycle them and keep making plays with them. It's, it's pretty broken. Uh, one Book of Moon, gotta have the Secret Rare. It's pretty dope. Uh, it's really good for shutting off uh, a Dryden. You, you know, like, you could play this turn one. Or, I guess, you'd be a uh, second player. You just flip their Dryden down and they, don't, they can't really do much. I don't know. Pretty sick. Alright, we're running one Twin Twister. Uh, I kind of want to run another one, but like I said, the deck is pretty, it's pretty tight. Um, I don't know. Maybe you could try to fit uh, some more back row removal. Uh, so we're running three uh, Wonder Wands. Uh, if you don't know what this does, you can only equip it to a spellcaster, and then you can send this in the spellcaster to the graveyard to draw two cards. 
Alright, and then for our trap lineup, we're running three artifact sanctum for obvious reasons to get your artifacts out on the field and also if this gets popped uh, by your opponents on, on your on your opponent's turn, you can or not even your opponent's turn. If it's destroyed by your opponent's card effects, then you can um, destroy one card in the field. So Solemn Strike, I'm running two. I'm running two or one solemn warning. One vanity emptiness. And then the triple D barrier. Beautiful card. Obviously all that's good for shutting down your opponent's plays. Alright, so for our extra deck here, we have three uh, Ragin, I guess you would call them. Pretty much once per turn, uh, during either player's turn, he has a Book of Moon effect where you can flip one of their uh, creatures face down. So it's, it's really sick for, you know, shutting down your opponent's plays, interrupting them, uh, their XZs and whatnot. Um, so, yeah. And then we're running three Makaba. So pretty much what he does is you can... During either player's turn, uh, when a spell trap or monster effect is activated, um, you can send a card of the same type from your hand to the graveyard. And if you do, you negate that effect and then you destroy the card. So, it's really good. Actually, you banish that card. So, that's even better. Uh, also, you fusion summon, you know, these for, with the uh, invocation or whatever. And if we run some earth in here... Yeah, this dude right here. So, I mean, against Zodiac, that's really good because, you know, you could banish their their Zodiac creatures, their rats and stuff, so they can't re, uh, re recycle them or whatever. So, yeah, we're running three Macaba. We're running two of the Purgatrio. So, he says uh, it gets 200 attack for each card your opponent controls, and also he can attack as many monsters as your opponent controls uh, once each. Oh, excuse me. And if this card attacks a defense position monster and inflicts position damage to your opponent, so yeah, he can get really big really fast. Uh, you know, depending on how much your uh, opponent's playing, and uh, yeah, de dealing pieces of damage is always good. And you can pretty much wipe their field with him. Um, and then we're running one of the invoked uh, Elysium, and uh, oh, excuse me, pretty much this counts as a dark. Earth, Water, Fire, and Wind attribute. And once per turn during either player's turn, you can target one invoked uh, monster you control or in your graveyard. And uh, you can banish it and all uh, all monsters your opponent controls with the same attribute as that monster. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if you have one of the same as attribute as theirs, you can pretty much wipe um, all that attribute out that your opponent controls. And then we have an emote, uh, invoked Me Megalanica. Yeah, it's pretty much just a, b a big beater, um, 3,000 beat stick, 3,300 booty. Um, like I said, you could banish their their zodiac plays or their zodiacs in their graveyard from the uh, invocation, and yeah, you can hurt them uh, their strategy a lot with them. So uh, for XZs, we're running just the one. This is for your artifacts because uh, you can see it's a level five, and once per turn you could detach one, and then you could destroy a face up monster your opponent controls. And then they take damage equal to half of its uh, attack. So, also this can't attack directly to your opponent for the rest of the turn. But I mean, you know, if they have multiple creatures, pop one and then attack into that one, you know, killing it. So, all right. And for our synchros, uh, I'll start with this one. So, Wind Witch Winter Bell. This is the one you want to go into uh, initially when you get your three Wind Witches out. Um, pretty much when it's summoned, you can deal damage to your opponent equal to. Uh, one one which which is a uh, level times 200 so it's like a little burn for uh you'll be getting like 800 i think is the max you'll be getting pretty much um and during either play's battle phase you can target one which one which monster you control and then you can special summon one monster from your hand with this, the level you, uh, less than or equal to the monster but it can't attack that turn so it's like a cute little play uh you're not really gonna be using it too often honestly and yeah you can use once per turn uh, get into the so we have i'm running two of the clear wing synchro dragons uh this is really easy to get into level sevens in this uh deck and then your uh crystal wing synchro dragon for obvious reasons uh it's an amazing card i love it i almost want to run the second one but i don't know i i think it's fine